Hey guys, before we begin, can I ask you guys to please go down and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and don't forget to press the bell to be notified of any future videos coming up. I hope you guys enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to the first video of Character Archetypes or Writer's Advice on How to Make a Good Character. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, let's talk about this like this. I'm going to be demonstrating a character that you can take for like a D&D session or to write a story with and give you some pros and cons on what makes this character a good character. Let's start. One of the character arcs I believe that would be very fascinating is the Royal Warrior arc. Now the Royal Warrior arc is a very fascinating one because it has a lot of maneuverability and also a few restrictions but we'll get to that later. What do I mean by Royal Warrior? I mean a member of a royal family or house, you know, decides to become a warrior despite their odds. And usually they're the leader or the one who is trying to just, you know, be able to, you know, see the world. Now that could be one of the reasons why, but we have a few reasons. Let's take the Royal Princess Warrior archetype. Now one thing that could be interesting about this is why is she doing this? Now, there are many reasons that she could be doing this. One, maybe her mother died of some reason, or father, whatever, died because of nobility reasons. Like, maybe there's a war, and the princess wanted to fight against the person who did this and bring them to justice to avenge their family. Or, you could take it this route. Maybe a princess wants to, you know, learn more about the world or prove herself in the process. By going out into a dangerous world that 9 times out of 10 her father restricts her on, says that it's too dangerous and that she is going to get herself killed. But it ultimately comes back as the hero of said story, proving that she is just as capable as anyone else. Which is a very fascinating archetype. Or another one could be this. Maybe she is a political leader who wants to, you know, just stop being a political person because, well, Politics are kind of boring. Don't sue me, please. Anyway, now what can make this character archetype more fascinating? Well, I'm glad you asked, no one who said anything. You are going to get your answer. How do we make this character more interesting, and what are the pros and cons of this? How do we make this character more interesting is rather simple, really. Give the character some sort of, you know, maybe spell that they know it and it's like super dangerous or whatnot. No, that's boring. Do not do that. Do not follow bad advice, Bryce. That is a bad idea. I'm going to be completely fair. That is really bad. Having a spell that only they know is bad. How about this? Have a spell that's uncontrollable and the only person who knows it is halfway across the planet and that their quest is to go all the way over to, you know, where this guy is and try to get the ability to learn this spell. In the process, fight bandits, maybe someone who tries to seek her unstable power as like, you know, a very reliable warrior, and that that's a bad idea. But you could also have the idea that maybe no one exists who can like teach her how to reasonably use this power. And it's like more of a quest of upbringing and how they believe in themselves will help be able to, you know, create something about it. Now the pros and cons of a royal warrior archetype is this. A, the warrior is in a world that they have no idea about and so they can create some pretty tense situations. Now another thing that can be interesting is that this shows how much they see what their, you know, royal lineage has done to the world. Maybe their, you know, royal family is a bunch of jerks to the people, but outside of the, you know, royal eye or anyone else, it's not so the same way. Rather, they believe the politics, but they hate the people. They like the power, but none of the responsibility. And this could show, you know, a character forming a resistance because they don't believe the same thing. Or they can actually, you know, create a small group of people to try and fix the world. Or another one of the pros is that you have a character who sees both sides of a war. Maybe they see the political side, which is boring and annoying, 
and they want to see the more action-filled side which is actually a lot more dangerous because they're inexperienced, they're unable of understanding how this world works, and it's just overall a really bad idea. Now, how else do we make this character more interesting? Well, do exactly that. Just, you know, have this character, you know, be someone who wants to fight. Now, you could do, use the chosen one trope, but that's boring. Let's, let's make it more interesting. I'm going to present this story, and I think you guys will enjoy it. The royal prince Davin believed that he was of highborn lineage, but discovered the truth was much more horrific. Discovered that his father, the king, was not his real father. Now Davin has to go on a quest to find his mother and get the answers he so desperately seeks, along the way fighting against demons and angels alike who wished to seek his aid in a war that would change the world forever. But all he cares about is getting answers. See how interesting of an idea that is? You know, maybe he's not a royal lineage and that he's actually, you know, a rather, you know, average dude. Or you can go ahead and just make it like this, where the character's kind of boring and no one likes dealing with them. And they're actually not there for the character. They're more of a backup character. That's something that could be done really well, and that if a backup character exists, that would be a very fascinating archetype. Now, how do we get the next one? Well, the next one's rather simple. We're going to the cons now. Cons. There are some pretty hefty cons for a royal warrior archetype. One, they believe themselves highly, and they like to think themselves as, you know, someone who doesn't deserve, you know, maybe the powers that they were granted, or they believe themselves too highly, and they believe that everyone else should work for them. Standard, you know, king who doesn't care about his subjects in any way, shape, or form. You can very clearly tell he's going to be a great swell of a guy in, you know, his royal upbringing. But this could also be a good thing because it shows him, you know, seeing a world of horror and that, you know, maybe... It, he fails at a task and or the party fails at a task and he could have you know fixed it but chose not to because of his stubbornness and pride which would have been very fascinating as a character arc and it would have made this character you know much more interesting as they go from being you know a self-righteous jerk to being someone who actually tries to help occasionally now let's try this one out Davin is a royal prince he hails from a very, very wealthy family. The king, as a matter of fact. He doesn't believe himself to be with the, you know, common folk. He believes himself to be better. Something that he can safely say is probably true. But he believes himself to be above them. He believes himself to be a god. And now he hears about this prophecy and is asked by his father to go and investigate. He doesn't want to, but he has no choice. See how you can create two ends of spectrum of a character being either self-righteous or, you know, overconfident? There are two completely separate things. They create a good, interesting archetype, and they can create a very fascinating character that you can enjoy. Now, Another question I probably bet a lot of you are asking is how do we make this character's flaws? Now, character flaws are very difficult to really perform. You have to make a character who can be relatable because there are flaws. If you say that, you know, the flaw is that, you know, this person just wants to, you know, see the world as a better place and will do anything, that's kind of boring. How about this? The prince hates his father because of some reason. Prince Davin hates his father for breathing, you know, oxygen the wrong way or something. And so he creates this, you know, distaste for authority figures and, you know, just not being able to trust anyone who has high authority. And so that's one of his flaws. He hates authority. And that's a good idea. It can make, you know, some very tense situations of where Davin's in trouble with, let's say, another royal family and he disrespects the, that family a lot. Or it could send the king to find a mercenary to go and bring his son back 
because he know he won't listen to royal guards. He wants someone who you know can be trusted, and then that can create another spy and some side plot and whatnot to make this character more and more fascinating. Now another thing that we could do is this: How do you make a character you know not boring? Don't make them a Mary Sue. For the love of all that is good in this world, do not make them a Mary Sue. It's kind of annoying. Now, another thing that could be very fascinating about this character is what lineage makes them. And it could ask the question, what does power truly give someone? If it gives them nothing and makes them feel like they're nothing, then that could be a quest of, you know, just trying to figure out who they are. Or it could be the fact that, you know, maybe this Prince Dobbin you know, decided that, you know, his father just gave him everything growing up, and he was a very spoiled brat of a kid, but it didn't change him that way. It made him actually, you know, much more interesting, and it made him want to do what is right because of the fact that it's right, rather than, you know, just ultimately deciding, hey, I have to do this because my father has asked. He'll, he'll give me a, you know, boost in allowance, but it's more along the lines of just, I want to do what is right because it is right. There are so many ways to create the, you know, uh, royal family archetype, but I guess the best way to put it is that you are able to create your own story and you are able to enjoy it. Now the question becomes, how do you want your royal warrior to exist? Leave a comment down below and I will see you.